Hello YouTube, it's Jan Beta again and yeah, what I have here is basically most of the stuff I need for the little project I'm planning on today. Um, yeah, these are basically battery holders for batteries like these. It's a lithium cell 2032, standard 3 volt lithium cell and these are the most I guess the most standard diodes you can get. It's a 1N4848. You probably remember from one of my last videos where I was concerned with um, these here. This is not the one from the video, but yeah, the one from the video is actually in the Amiga. This is uh, the one that was in there before, which is a lot cleaner, and I marked the polarity here of the battery that was on here. And actually, I did a bit of research, and you can actually power the clock, which this battery was for, from 3 volts instead of the 3.6 volts that were originally in here. Um, yeah, suppo that's supposed to work. The problem is that these uh, batteries are really, um, at least in the, the A501 I showed in the last video, they are uh, charged. So yeah, this there's basically a charging circuit that so that this battery is um, charged when the Amiga is running. And yeah, one of the things you never want to do to one of these is to charge it or to give um, current to it because uh, these are quite unstable and they, yeah, they tend to uh, burst in flames and explode if you uh, try to charge them. So we're going to prevent that by inserting a little diode into the um, yeah, so that, that it can't be charged, basically. We're gonna um, restrict the flow of currents um, with the diode, so that that's not a problem. So let's see. And of course, we're gonna use the A501 that I repaired in the last video. Um, yeah, so let's see how we do this. Not quite sure myself, but yeah, let's see. So here's what we're gonna try to do. Um, we have the positive rail here, it's a plus, um, and we have the negative rail. And in between, we have the battery. So this is the negative side of the battery, this is the positive side. And what we're gonna do to prevent it from charging it is to insert a little diode here, which is, uh, in our case, 4848, I think. How's it? Yes, 4848. So. That's what we're gonna do, and that's probably gonna do it. And this is a CR2032, three volts battery. And yeah, that's what we're gonna try to implement in our little board here. Let's see. So the first thing I'm gonna have to determine is where our positive and negative are. So the positive, is the top side here. I guess it's going in like, th like this. So the positive pin is this one and the negative pin is gonna be this one. And where is the positive and the negative on this board? And that's quite easy because we have the connection to here on the negative side of this Capacitor. So I think this is going to be the negative side and this is going to be the positive.
positive side. And as it so happens, I think we're gonna get it through these holes here with a little bending and twisting and stuff like that. So what we're probably gonna do is to yeah we basically have to put a diode between this point here and this point here. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this resistor here and insert my diode there. So I'm removing I'm simply removing this here by heating it up and getting rid of it basically. And there's going to be the positive and the negative. Yeah, this seems to fit in there quite nicely. So let's see if we can get this through the hole here. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to heat this up again. Yeah, there we go. Basically, I, the solder on here is the solder I added last time, which is not too long ago. So I'm just gonna leave it at that, I think. I wanna make um, the little diode connection here. In like this. So there's my diode in place. I'm gonna clip the leads so they don't short out any stuff here. And I really think that might have been this mod here. So let's check this out in a real Amiga, I guess. Yeah! Okay, so here's my Amiga 500. You've seen this one before. It's the one I used in the previous previous videos. Um, yeah. What has changed is that I now have a proper RGB cable connected to my CRT, which makes for much better picture quality, really. The, um, a502 is uh, the model number, I think, of this um, TV modulator thing you can put in the RGB port. These things uh, really suck if you don't want uh, an antenna RF signal out of your Amiga. You can basically yeah, just throw them away. Go for an, a proper RGB cable, the picture is very good. And go for a CRT. It's, uh, the best thing you can do to your Amiga, I think. It's it looks yeah. It just it it's made for the thing, so yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like, I guess. So let's see if we can insert a little board there. So here's our little board. I hereby and in insert the battery, I think, and see if it doesn't explode. Shouldn't. No, it doesn't get warmer, stuff like that. So let's see. I hope that it works. Let's put it in there. And I probably shouldn't have connected the cables before. Yeah, I, it's a bit tedious now. Let's see. Get it in there. No. Yeah, the battery is too. The battery. We have to desolder this again and make some. Yeah, there has to be. It's standing off a little bit on the side here, so we have to change that, I guess. Ah, huh. pity. And so what we're gonna have to do is to um, yeah, make sure that this is a little bit... Yeah, it's, we're gonna move this in this direction, basically, so that it doesn't obstruct the way this is inserted. Wasn't thinking of this before, so yeah. So I basically bend the pin into this hole here so that it it really it's not really in there, but I guess it's enough. 
to make contact and we're gonna flow some solder in there so that it flows to the other side hopefully yeah that's what it does so yeah, I guess it's it's not really maybe I'll add a blob of um, hot glue later or something like that it's not really sturdy but let's see if it fits in the Amiga okay it's the second try I'll insert the magic battery here not that easy from this position here, but I guess, yeah, I guess it's on there, so let's see. I'll switch on power of Amiga. So far so good, let's boot up the workbench, I guess. I have my workbench disk here. It's the moment where it normally sees the clock. Yeah, and it sees the clock. Still on 1978, I guess. Yeah. We're gonna set it and see if it remembers the time again. I'm gonna see if the, um, the memory expansion still works at all. It's gonna be interesting. Okay, so the memory expansion works. There are eight 878,912 uh, uh, bytes of memory, yeah, roughly one megabyte. I got this wrong in the last video, so I'm, I'm double checking in my mind here. Um, yeah, let's see, let's set the clock. I think you can set it in the preferences here. Let's see if I remember correctly. There, there, there we go. So it is, hmm, what date is today? I think it's the 10th of January, or is it? It's, actually it's eight o'clock and 20 minutes. So something like this. So let's go and save. And it should now um, save the yeah, the clock setting basically. So let's yeah, basically turn this off and wait for a minute and then reboot this and see if the clock settings are still there. I had the Amiga powered off for yeah, some minutes, 10 minutes or so now. And I'm powering it on again. And yeah, I'm inserting workbench here. So and now is the moment where the time is supposed to be shown there. Let's see. Yeah. And hey, I guess it worked. Nice. It's off a few minutes so maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe something's uh, damaged there in the in the clock chip there. Let's look at the X copy again. I got some uh, when I tweeted a picture of uh, me running X copy. It was quite. I was quite. Um, had quite a few um, likes on Twitter the other day. So yeah, let's just start this up for kicks, I guess. This is one of the later versions. I think the last released version of this was from 1993. Um, late 93 I guess and it had another look it was all um, pink I think the whole logo and stuff was changed then this is a very nice little uh, floppy copy program so yeah I guess this works so yeah and I read on the forums I got the idea from that you can actually power your um, clock from a coin cell like this for um, everything from two years to around six years. A lot of people have done this mod I guess and yeah for most people it worked a treat 
And I guess that's what it's going to do for me. So as you can see, the clock's still there. I had it off for some minutes again. Um, and it's still showing the right time, I guess. Yeah, it's exactly the right time. So this seems to be working. Nice. So if you like this, you feel free to subscribe to my channel. There's gonna be a whole bunch of videos on retro computers. Um, I have the Commodore 64, as you can see in the background there. Um, basically, there's a lot of stuff I'm gonna work on uh, in this picture now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do some work on that stuff over there, which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a surprise, I guess. The one in, on, in the front there is a little um, amplifier. Again, a trash pick. Um, that's uh, Marantz. I'm working on still. I have still to to um, exchange the light bulbs for the scale lights there. Yeah, there's also going to be a lot of stuff on the Commodore 64. You can see there, and there's going to be a bit of stuff on the monitor. You can see there because this works a treat, but the power button broke just when I I got it for for a few days. And the power button, which is on the back side of the monitor, which is has quite a flimsy um, push button, it just broke. And I'm gonna, um, yeah, basically I'm gonna put another button in there or something like that, or another switch that is a bit more sturdy. So yeah, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. I'm Jan Bitter. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>